All right, and we are live. Good evening po sa inyong lahat mga kagro. And of course, welcome back to Gurung Pinoy. We would like to especially welcome back, of course, the members of Team Piaget. So again, po, pwede pa po kayong humabol, magpamember po kayo sa Team Piaget. This is for the takers of LEP this September. You know? So if you will be taking the LEP this September, you can still become a member of Team Piaget. You can answer our quizzes. You can watch a full-length video. Po, pwede niyo pong balikan lahat ng videos natin sa ating group, which is, of course, Team Piaget. You can download our PDF files, and of course, you can join our pre-board and final coaching. The only way that you can join our pre-board and final coaching is be by becoming a member of Team Piaget. Wala pong separate na payment for our final coaching and also for our pre-board. The only method that you can join those things that I'm talking about is by becoming a member of Team Piaget. So again, just send a message to our Facebook page. Kung hindi pa po kayo nare-reply ng ating admin, hintayin lamang po na no? medyo marami po yung nagsisend a message sa atin ngayon at uh, especially kapag ka out of office hours na po, babalikan po kayo bukas, okay? Now, of course, we would like to congratulate our newest LPTs, lahat ng members ng Gurung Pinoy na ngayon ay ganap ng LPT, yung Team Tanders, Team Gardner, yung ilang pang na, natirang Team Gardner na pumasa na, Team Erickson, and of course, also some members of Team Piaget na nag-take na ng let this June, no? Congratulations sa lahat ng ating LPTs. Again, huwag po kayong mawala ng pag-asa, no? Kahit pa ulit-ulit, kahit ilang takes na ng let, huwag pong panghinaan ng loob. Mag-enroll po kayo, no? Maging member ng Guru Pinoy at uh, tutulungan po po kayo maipasa yung inyong licensure exam for teachers. So again, congratulations po sa lahat ng mga pumasa. Kung hindi pa po pum- mapasa, eh magpa-member na po sa Guru Pinoy para siguradong sa susunod yung take, eh, mani-mani na lang po, no? Um, uh, very easy na for you. It's going to be so easy already for all of you to just get your license, okay? So again, become a member of Team Piaget so that you can become a licensed professional teacher. Now, if you will be taking the let in March next year, kung ikaw ay kasama sa ating new curriculum, we have our new team, which of course is Team Bruner, okay? So again, if you will be taking your let in March next year. We have already opened Team Bruner. We have discounts for the first 300 members. So magpa-member po kayo, no? Pag hindi pa po kayo member, mag-send po ng message sa ating Facebook page. That's Guru Pinoy kung saan po kayo nanonood ngayon no? sa ating Facebook page. Para po ma-assist kayo ng ating admin, of course, you can uh, watch all the full-length videos as members of Team Bruner. That's for March 2023. Now, we also have still our our game, no? Meron pa rin tayong Gcash and Load game, which is called Subscribe, Answer, and Win. Gcash and Load this is only through YouTube this week. Okay, so today's Friday or tonight's Friday, 7 p.m. That's on YouTube. And of course, all you need to do is to subscribe to our YouTube channel to answer the question of the day and of course, win Gcash or Load. Okay, so the first five um, correct choices or the first five answers na correct, no? yun po yung ating magiging winners. Now, make sure that you um, you include the number of the item para po ma-validate no? na yung answer nyo ay para talaga for that item. Okay? So again, that's still for you to tonight. Okay? Now, tonight's discussion is centered on professional education, but of course, let's all have our opening prayer. Dear Lord, I come to you to ask for your guidance and direction in this study session. I ask that the Holy Spirit fill me with strength, creativity, and understanding to get through my studies without difficulty or sin. Help me hold my focus and attention. Help me to retain all that I learned. Please make my mind sharp and keep distractions at bay. If any part of my study is weak or lacking in some way, let it be revealed so that I may correct it. Thank you for this opportunity to learn. Amen. All right. Now, once again, this is professional education. Please do like, love, share our video, start a watch party, tag your friends, and of course, send us stars and super chat, super stickers to our YouTube channel. Okay, basahin ko lang ito. Facebook user, I cannot see your name, no? Nasa Team Peche siya, pero hindi siya nag-register sa ating StreamYard, okay? So, hindi ko, na, hindi ko nakikita yung inyong name. Good if po. Maraming salamat po, Gurong Pinoy LPT. Na po ako, malaking bagay po mga videos. At pa-live mo, Ma'am Mek. Madali ka pong 
madali ko pong nasagutan ang Prof. Ed na dati ay hirap na hirap po ako. Naka two times po ako na di nakapasa at ngayon pang third time ay LPT na po ako from 70 to 85.60. Thank you po talaga. Sana'y marami pa kayong matulungan na katulad ko. God bless po. Proud Team Pesche. Okay, congratulations ma'am or sir. Of course, we are so happy for our new LPTs, no? Uh, Ma'am Evelyn Canada, good evening po, Coach Mac and Kaguro. Team Piaché po. I just want to say thank you, LPT na rin siya, no? Galing nyo mag-rationalize. Maraming salamat and of course, congratulations, Ma'am Evelyn Canada, LPT. Okay, congratulations po sa lahat ng ating mga LPTs. So again, uh, po pwede pa po kayo humabol if you will be taking the lab this September. Po pwede pa po humabol as member of Team Piaché. And of course, if you will be taking the lab in March, ay Team Brunner naman po yung inyong magiging team. So habol po kayo, mag-send po ng message sa ating Facebook page. Uh, especially mga nahihirapan sa Prof. Ed, no? Uh, babalik-balikan po natin yung discussion ng ating professional education. Again, please do like, love, share our videos, start a watch party, tag your friends. Then, of course, send us stars on Facebook and send us super super chat, super stickers naman on YouTube. Okay, again, we're still waiting for some of you to like, love, share our video. We are going to start in a few minutes. Okay, Ma'am Tin Linga, kay Ma'am Mek, ako po si Christina, Team Piaché. LPT na po ako, salamat po Ma'am Mek, laking tulong po sa akin. Salamat po, first taker. God bless, proud Team Piaché. Congratulations, Ma'am. Christina Lingat, LPT. Okay, again, if you'd want to become a member of Team Piaché, send a, mes a message po through our Facebook page. All right, this is professional education. And we start with question number one. Okay, number one, which is not a characteristic of an analytic learner? Letter A, learns whole to part. Letter B, enjoys memorizing. Letter C, works on details. Or letter D, sequences objects in order. Okay, which is our choice for number one. Maraming salamat again to all our star senders, Sir Charlie Barro Espora, Sir Aaron Lyson, Ma'am Maureen Santos Gomez, Sir Sambansil. Maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat ng mga star senders natin kaguro. Ma'am Arlene Sheen Facun. Ma'am Rachel Batao Honrubia. Ma'am Venus Almas Popletado. Maraming salamat po. Si Ma'am Marinel, Marinel Calpajares, thank you po. Ma'am Asela Marindayaka, thank you. Sir Oni Manalo, maraming maraming salamat po. Ma'am Jonah May Octavio Gaki, Ma'am Nish Asken. Ma'am Grace Cambio, Ma'am Angelica Tatel. Ma'am Jovi Baculot. Thank you po for all our star senders. Okay, kung nakalitan po yung inyong names, pasensya na po. But of course, we appreciate you sending us stars. Maraming maraming salamat to all our star senders. And of course, super chat, super stickers naman sa ating YouTube channel. Okay, going back to question number one, which is not a characteristic of an analytic learner, letter A, learns whole to part, letter B, enjoys memorizing, letter C, works on details, or letter D, sequences objects in order, no? Now, as you can see, we have the term not here, not, which is not a characteristic of an analytic learner, not a characteristic, hindi siya characteristic ng ating analytic learner. Ang correct choice natin dito ay... Letter A, learns whole to part. Bakit letter A? Because letter A po ay parte ng mga characteristics ng ating global learner. No? So if you are an analytic learner, inuuna mo yung parte so that you can create the whole. Hindi po yung from whole to part. No? Baka na, na confuse kayo because of the term analysis. Because when you say you are analyzing, when you are doing analysis, then you uh, break down the whole no? into its components. But as, as an analytic learner, what you do is you learn by using the different parts and then you come up with the entire idea or the entire concept. Let's take a look at our discussion. Okay, so global learner and analytical learner or analytic learner, these are some of the differences. Your global learner, they're linked to the right hemisphere, 
that's the dominant part of their brain, they take in information holistically. They begin with understanding concepts first, so whole first, then details. Na. So whole to part, ito yung, kaya, ito yung reason bakit letter A yung ating sagot. Hindi siya parte ng analytic learner, parte po siya ng global learner nyo. Prefer music or other background noise. Now, for your analytic style, no, analytic learner mo, they're grounded in the left hemisphere, take information seek sequentially step by step kaya tama din yung letter D mo no? it's also part of the characteristics of your analytic learner they prefer to learn in uh, a series of facts that lead toward an understanding of a larger concept so again they start with the different facts different parts and then they come up with a whole okay requires orderly quiet surroundings okay so again yung ating choice is letter a your analytic learners would also enjoy memorizing they work on details they sequence objects in order okay so letter a po ang tumpak na choice for number one we go to number two the teacher's first task in the selection of media in teaching is to determine the letter A choice of the students, letter B availability of the media, letter C objectives of the lesson, or letter D technique to be used. What's your choice? Basahin ko lang tong comment ni Sir Joe M. and Sendat. Good evening, Mame. I just want to say thank you so much for the live stream at sa YouTube. Finally, after my third time to take the let, nakapasa na rin. Napakagaling niyo mag-explain ng questions. Dito lang po sa Guru Pinoy, ako na motivate mag-review na maayos. Dati nag-review center ako, first take ko ng let, pero hindi pinala. Dito lang po sa Guru Pinoy, ako motivate at mag-review. Araw-araw ko din inuulit-ulit ang mga videos niyo po. Hindi ako pwedeng matulog sa gabi hanggang hindi ako nakakapanood ng video. So congratulations si Sir Joe M. N. Sendad, isa sa ating mga kagurong nag-movie marathon. No? And so we know that movie marathon using the videos of Gurong Pinoy napaka-effective po in your preparation for the let. Okay, so balikan po lahat ng ating videos yan po sa ating YouTube channel. There's almost 500 videos. So siguro isa na lang yung kulang or dalawa na lang yung kulang 500 na videos natin na, na po pwedeng-pwede nyong gamitin na pag-review. Almost 3 hours dapat daily. Meron kayong daily dose of Guru Pinoy. Uh, one of our pastors this year, no, Sir Mark Mission, uh, yan yung sinabi niya, isa sa mga pinigay niyang advice, um, at least 3 hours of Guru Pinoy every day. So mag-movie marathon po, balikan po lahat ng ating videos dyan sa ating YouTube channel. Okay, going back to question number two, what is your answer? Let's take a look at your choices. Letter C, I see a lot of letter C's in our comment box, and that is correct, no? So whenever you are going to select the media, what media am I going to use to teach, no? What videos will I include? What uh, pictures should I, should I include, no? So what are the different media that I can use during my instruction? You'd always go back. You'd always determine your objectives. Bakit? Kasi po dapat yung mga ginagamit mo as your instructional materials should be aligned, should be coherent with your objectives. Objectives mo yung highlight ng inyong lesson, no? So yan po yung, yung kailangan guide, no? Yung lagi mong guide. Kung ano yung magiging decision mo sa araw-araw na pagtuturo, yung guide mo po yung inyong objectives. And we all know what objectives are. Ito yung mga targets na dapat imaabot ng ating mga students. Okay? So letter C, objectives of the lesson, ang ating tumpak na choice. We go to number three. Which activity works best with self-expressive people? Letter A, metaphors. Letter B, kinesthetic activities. Letter C, inquiry. Or letter D, independent study. What is our choice? Number three. Question number three. Ma'am, Bea me Abrenica de Milietes. Hello, Ma'am. Good evening po. Thanks so much, Ma'am. Dahil po sa Guru Pinoy. At sa inyo, Ma'am, Clap Pastor na po ako. Last, uh, last June po ako nag-take ng exam. God bless po, Ma'am. Team Piaché. Congratulations, Ma'am, Bea me. De Melietes, one of our LPTs. Okay, so again, be one of our LPTs, become a member of Team Piaché or become a member of Team Bruner so that you can easily pass the lab. Okay, letter B or letter D? Okay, nagahalo-halo, yung choices nyo are B and D. Ma'am Evelyn Canada, isa sa ating mga passers, thank you po for the stars. Ganon din kay Ma'am Jonah Bell, 
Kuliman Garcia. Thank you. Ma'am Chinky Bautista, maraming salamat po. Ma'am Jeneline de, de la Cruz, thank you so much. And Ma'am um, Sweet Sweet Lakaba, magandang gabi po. Thank you for the hundred stars. Okay, I see a lot of letter Ds. Tumpa kaya ang letter D? Or ligwa kaya ang letter D? Going back to your question, which activity works best with self-expressive, no? Self-expressive people. Those people who'd want to always do self-expression. They want to always express themselves, their ideas in different forms. So usually uh, in movements. And the correct choice here is letter B. This is kinesthetic activities, no? Not just bodily movements, but pwede din po siyang tactile activities. Yung mga drawing-drawing na ginagamit yung kamay nila, no? So so this is um, one of the reasons why you have your kinesthetics, your 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 tactiles, no, your tactiles mo. These are kinesthetic activities, and this is our correct choice. Hindi po letter D, no. Your metaphors can be used for those who are verbal linguistic, no, verbal linguistic mo na people, okay? Or you can also use this for your analytic na learners, na metaphors, because sometimes it can also be uh, synonymous with your logic. Po, pwede kasi may comparison, no? so that can also be your analytic. Your inquiry are those who always try to ask questions, no? So analyt uh, your, your inquiry mo, those who always be uh searching for answers to their different questions independent study mo this is more of the self self smart people yung mga intrapersonal naman yung kanilang intelligence for self-expressive people the correct choice would be letter b kinesthetic activities so how they would uh express themselves using bodily movements okay so letter b po ang tumpak na choice for question number three now remember that we have nine different types of intelligences no, as part of your multiple intelligences theory by howard gardner and you see those nine different intelligences on your screen okay so you have those people who are visual spatial you have naturalistic you have logical mathematical you know those who are very good at math your existential are those who always try to to find their their um their purpose in life, okay? So purpose in life, your existential mo siya. Uh, musical rhythmic, yung mga mahilig kumanta, bodily kinesthetic, ito yung gumagamit ng kanilang katawan, your athletes, your dancers, ito po yung ating kaninang um, tumpak na choice, no? bodily kinesthetic. They want to express themselves through bodily movement. Verbal uh, linguistic mo, these are people who are very good at talking. Then you have interpersonal, these are people, smart people. And you have intrapersonal people or intrapersonal um, intelligence. Ito naman yung self-smart people. They know about themselves. They always reflect. No? So usually these are your nuns, your priests, your pastors. Okay, so those are intrapersonal smart people, okay? But we were looking for letter B for question number three. We move on with question number four. The Asian task state that thinking because becomes more logical and abstract as children reach the formal operation stage. What is the educational implication of this finding? Letter A, expect hypothetical reasoning from learners between 12 to 15 years of age. Letter B, engage children in analogical reasoning as early as preschool to train them for HOTS, higher order thinking skills. Letter C, learners who are not capable of logical reasoning from ages 8 to 11 lag behind in their cognitive development. Or letter D, let children be children. Okay, what's your choice for number four? Ano po ang kumpak na choice for question number four? Okay, pasingit lamang daw. Basahin ko si Ma'am Bell Estepa. I just want to express my gratitude to Gurung Pinoy and to Coach Mech. Salamat Gurung Pinoy. Supposedly March 2020 ang date of examination ko. Pero dahil sa pandemic na postponed, Hanggang sa wakas, nakapag-take ako noong June 2022. Thank God, at first take LPT na ako. Thank you so much, Mamet. Masasabi ko pong di ako nahirapan ng exam, lalo na sa Prof. Ed, dahil tumatak talaga sa akin yung mga tinuro niyo po. Sulit a membership. Hashtag Team Piaché. Salamat po na marami. Congratulations, Ma'am Bell Estepa. And of course, maraming salamat for your positive feedback. Congratulations po. Okay, I see A's for question number four. 
Ano kaya ang tumpak na choice? Number four. Thank you, Ma'am Jillian Grace Bantolo Fajardo for the 75 stars. Okay, again to all our star senders, maraming maraming salamat po. Ma'am Jem Gonzaga, thank you po. Ma'am Angelica Manlapas Villanueva, maraming salamat. Sir John Paul Corpus, maraming salamat po. Ma'am Jocelyn Paraliag de Wen de De Undo, maraming maraming salamat po for the stars. Ganon din kay Mamiana. Uh, Sir Shauden, thank you. At ma'am, kay ma'am Laika Fernandez Macaso, maraming maraming salamat po. Okay, letter is for number four. So sabi ng number four mo, uh, sabi ng appreciation task mo, yung uh, cognitive development theory by Jean Piaget, thinking becomes more logical and abstract as children reach the formal operation stage. And so what is its educational implication? And the correct choice would be letter A. No? So formal operation stage mo will be during the, the years between 12 to 15 years of age. No? And so Tama po yung expect hypothetical reasoning from learners between 12 to 15 years of age because they are already at their formal operations uh, stage. Okay, let's take a look at your slide. Now, these right here are the different stages no, according to Jean Piaget's cognitive development theory. Now, you have sensory motor, pre-operational, concrete operational, and formal operational stage. No? So, smart people cook fish yan yung ating mnemonics no smart people cook fish or sensory motor pre-operational concrete operational and formal operational makinig no especially pag hindi pa masyadong kabisado itong cognitive development theory ni Piaget now your sensory motor stage should be from birth until 1 to 2 years old no? so until 2 years old dito your kids here can differentiate self from the objects. Their self is their agent of action. They're, they're always be focused on themselves. No? They use mental symbols. And the main point or the main milestone here would be object permanence. When you say object permanence, alam na ng bata na kahit wala yung isang bagay sa harapan niya, no? by age one ito, one year old na yung bata, kahit hindi niya nakikita sa kanyang harapan, alam na ng bata na this thing or this person exists. Okay? This person already exists. During this time, kaya during the time, no, medyo umiiyak na yung bata kapag aalis yung nanay, aalis yung parent, umiiyak na yung bata. Okay? Para, parang katulad ng two months old po ngayon. No? Hindi siya umiyak dahil aalis ako. Umiiyak lang siya. Siguro buto. Okay? So, object permanence. no. Before this, the child would enjoy yung peekaboo. Okay? Yung peekaboo. Yung palagi siyang palagi siyang um, palagi siyang nagugulat pag binubuksan mo yung yung mata mo for example you hide your face and then you open your face because the child still has not acquired object permanence hindi siya aware na nandiyan ka lamang sa likod ng inyong kamay akala niya wala ka no so ito yung tinatawag nating out of sight out of mind kapag wala yung isang bagay or wala yung isang tao sa harapan niya akala niya this person or this object does not exist. But after that, once the child has reached object permanence, alam na niya na nandiyan pa rin yung the nanay, ang nanay niya, still exists even if the nanay is not in front of him or in front of her right now. Now, after this, you have your pre-operational. Yung pre-operational stage mo would, would be from 2 to 7 years old. No? So, um, preschool until early, no? So, early mga kindergarten, grade 1, grade 2, yung Yung anak. Uh, they would use language and uh, they would use objects represented by words and images. Okay, so for example, they have words for, for different objects like the toy, you know, so teddy, ball, they already know these words. Now, um, they still have irreversibility of action. So that means they do not still understand that subtraction is the opposite of addition. Alam lang nilang gumawa or uh, gawin yung addition but not subtraction yet no they are still not aware that subtraction is the opposite of addition 
and what else animism animism they think that everything can be alive no so even if uh electric fan lang siya or rice cooker siya or ding ding siya kinakausap ng anak mo during this stage no so pag pag nabangga siya sa sa door ay susuntukin din niya yung door no sasabihin niya inaway siya ng door that's animism uh meron din siyang meron din siyang ano no yung yung very very creative yung mind nila during this time okay disintegration in thinking begins no so slowly nagiging away na siya from egocentrism no nagiging uh, from egocentric the child would already start to socialize during the time kasi of your uh, early pre operational stage your late sensory motor and medyo egocentric pa yung bata no always ako 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 always selfish pa yung bata he or she thinks that whatever he or she sees nakikita din ng mga tao sa kanyang paligid okay now we go to your concrete operational that is during school age na nasa 7 to 12 years old uh, you your child here already have reversibility so alam na nila that subtraction is the opposite of addition no? your reversibility kahit na um ginawa mong flat yung ball of clay po pwede mo pa siyang ibalik into a ball of clay you also have decentration no? so they are focused not just on one aspect of an object but they can already see the different aspects of an object conservation they already know that even if you pour out the the contents of one glass now for example 100 ml yung laman ng baso na fat no fat narrow uh, uh fat yung wide wide yung yung baso mo and short 100 ml yung laman niya kahit na um nilipat mo siya sa baso na tall and narrower it would still have 100 ml no that's conservation okay so alam na nila that um, these two glasses, for example, here, even if their shapes are different, parehas lamang yung laman nila. No? That's uh, your conservation. And this is decentration. They already know. And that's also reversibility and also conservation. So these are some of the characteristics of your child at the concrete operational stage. But of course, if you have a child at this stage, pag sila po ay yung tuturuan, kailangan pa rin yung gumamit ng concrete objects, okay? So, concrete objects pa rin yung ating ginagamit. Formal operational here, we're already talking about logic, abstract reasoning, no? if X, then Y, what is honesty, no? You already can form hypothesis, they're already focused on future, hypothetical, ideological problems. So, medyo matayog na yung pag-iisip ng bata after your concrete operational, po pwede na siyang formal operational, okay? Our question a while, a while ago was focused on your formal operational. So again, we say your child during this stage can already perform logic, can already answer hypothetical questions, okay? So yung tumpak na choice po natin was letter A for number four. Now, number five. Here is a score distribution. You have the different scores there, which is the range. Letter A, 93. Letter B, 85. Letter C, 97. Or letter D, between 51 and 34. Pasalamatan ko lamang si Sir Freddy Jr. Tanlawan for sending us 10 SAR, no? Saudi Real, on YouTube. Maraming maraming salamat po, Sir Freddy. Okay, what is your choice for number five? Si Ma'am Diana Kagdan Balpin. Hello, ma'am. I am a follower of yours. I took the left last June 26, 2022. LPT na po ako. Salamat po sa mga discussion. Napakalaking tulong po. Sana marami pa po kayo matulungan. Thank you very much and God bless. Congratulations, Ma'am Diana Balpin, LPT. Okay, I see sis sa ating comment box. Na Mary Rose De Leon. Maraming salamat po for the stars. Uh, si Ma'am Yef Anel de la Vega, maraming salamat po for sending us stars. Si Ma'am Medef uh, Tangyan Tanudra, basahin ko lamang uh, na comment siya dito sa ating Facebook page. Uh, hello Ma'am Mac, good evening. Di talaga ako nagkamali sa pagpili ng online review. Salamat sa Diyos na napunta ako sa Gurong Pinoy Team Gardener. Let passer na po ako Ma'am. Salamat po sa inyo na marami. God bless you, ma'am, at sa family po, po ninyo. Good luck sa mga September takers. Laban lang po. 
shout out kay Sir Jeffrey C. Arida, isa sa ating mga team tenders. And of course, LP din din si Sir Jeffrey, no? isa sa first batch natin. Sir Jason Panes, maraming salamat po for the stars. Ganun din kay Sir Hemmer Ligalario. Okay, now I see a lot of letter C's in our comment box. And letter C, ang ating tumpak na choice. May nagtatanong bakit kaya letter C? Because of course, the formula for range is just the highest minus the lowest score. No? So difference lamang siya between your highest score and your lowest score. So in this score distribution, the highest is 98, the lowest is 1. And so 98 minus 1, that would give you 97. And that is the range. Okay, so range po, 97 for question number 5. We go to number six, the concepts of trust versus maturity, autonomy versus self-doubt, and initiative versus guilt are most closely related within the works of letter A, Erickson, letter B, Piaget, letter C, Freud, or letter D, Jung, or sometimes also pronounced as Young. Okay, what is our choice for question number six? Ma'am Morgan Pahoyo, good evening po Ma'am Meg at mga kaguro. Team Gardner po ako, salamat po sa Gurong Pinoy. And to Coach Meg, LPT na po ako. Congratulations Ma'am Morgan Pahoyo. Isa sa atin ni mga pioneers, no? Team Gardner pa si Ma'am. Ma'am Jeneline De La Cruz, maram maraming salamat for the stars. Ma'am Mags Dolormente Pasete, thank you for sending us 75 stars. Okay, what's your choice? For question number six. Okay, I see a lot of letter A's. We are talking about trust versus maturity, autonomy versus self-doubt, initiative versus guilt, and of course, we know that this is by Eric Erickson, Psychosocial Development Theory. Now, uh, let's take a look at our slides. Now, remember the stages of psychosocial development, according to Eric Erickson, it starts from early childhood. So, infancy, you have autonomy versus shame and doubt. No? So, you have to... I know, sorry, you have trust versus mistrust, okay? It's second stage na yung autonomy versus shame and doubt. Okay, so infancy, you have trust versus mistrust. That's why it's very important that we are taking good care of our babies, no? At alam natin, inaalagaan sila ng ating caregivers because your your child is developing trust during this time. So dapat, uh, pag umiyak yung bata, kunwari kanina sa aking baby, dapat eh, titignan mo kung ano yung uh, mali, kung ano yung nararamdaman ng anak mo. If your child is hungry, then you have to feed the child. No? Because the child during this time is developing trust. So kayong mga walang, walang uh, tiwala sa jowa, there might have been something wrong with the way you were you were taken care of during infancy. You know? So maaaring nagkaroon kayo ng mistrust. You are very distrustful because hindi kayo napadede, na maayos, or uh, maaaring pinaiyak kayo ng mahabang panahon bago kayo binigyan ng, ng milk no? during your infancy stage. Then of course, you have your early childhood, autonomy versus shame and doubt. During this time, the child is uh, developing independence. No? So you have to give your child the, um, the chance to be independent. You can give your child choices. You can also give your child very easy chores para um, makadevelop sila ng, ng autonomy and of course independence. Now, initiative versus guilt, this happens during preschool. So as a preschool parent, for example, a preschool teacher, or someone with preschoolers around them, dapat po hindi tayo yung gumagawa ng lahat ng bagay. So po pwedeng bigyan din, sa, din sila ng mga easy tasks no? because they are trying to develop initiative. Otherwise, your child is going to to grow up na batugan. No? Wala nang ginawa. Gusto matulog na lamang. Ayaw nang gumawa. Ayaw nang kumilos. Now, school age, your child here is very busy, of course, with schoolwork. Hindi po po pwedeng ikaw yung sumagot ng modules ng anak mo. Lahat ng modules. No? Po pwedeng siguro bigyan mo siya ng example or i-guide mo siya. Bigyan mo siya ng scaffold, pero hindi po pwedeng ikaw yung 
mag, na, ikaw yung gumawa ng lahat, no? tapos valedictorian yung anak mo, si nanay pala dapat or si tatay pala dapat yung valedictorian. This is industry versus inferiority. So dapat eh, binibigyan siya ng chance na gumawa ng sarili niyang gawain para maging uh, masipag siya, no? maging industrious yung inyong child and not inferior. Pag hindi mo siya binigyan ng chance to do his task, then your child is not going to grow self-confidence, magiging inferior yung child mo. No, wala siyang tiwala sa sarili. Hindi ko kaya. No, feeling ko hindi ko kaya. Now, you have adolescence. That's identity versus role confusion. And as a child here, meron na siyang identity. No, nakakapag-relate na siya with the different genders. If he or she is playing the role of a female, a male, or maybe LGBTQIA plus member siya in your society. Young adulthood, that's intimacy versus isolation. During this time, your uh, child would already have a boyfriend, girlfriend, may crushes na, no? So that's intimacy. Pag hindi naman, then the child might get isolated. Kung naging, role, naging confused siya sa role niya, no? During adolescence, for example. And so hindi niya alam, ano ba ako? Female, male, with whom do I identify? And so he or she would isolate himself dahil hindi siya maka makapag-form ng relationships with other people. Then you have middle adulthood. Uh, this is already during work years na, nag-work ka na, po pwedeng late 20s ka na, no, late 20s, 30s, 40s, ganyan. Um, this is generativity versus stagnation. Maaring nakapagpundar ka na ng maraming, bala, ng maraming bagay, may bahay ka na, may car ka na, may mga anak ka na. You are uh, generative. No? You, you have already generated some products. Or you might be stagnant. Maaring naging matandang dalaga ka, matandang binata, no? wala ka pa rin naiipon. Hanggang ngayon, wala kang trabaho. No? So that's stagnation. Then after that, you have maturity. No? The maturity, ego, integrity, versus despair. This is already during old age. No? So you have some people who have integrity, okay, na, na uh, naging satisfied sila with how their life played out, no? kung anong yung mga pinandaanan nila sa buhay, na-reach nila kung ano yung gusto nilang maabot, uh, na-try nila kung anong gusto nilang itry, no? so wala silang pinagsisisihan. If hindi naman nila yung nagawa yung mga bagay-bagay, maaaring merong despair yung inyong Uh, matanda, yung matanda nyo sa bahay, ma maaari maging makulit, desperado siya, maaari kasi hindi niya napakasalan yung girlfriend niya, naging matandang, matandang binata siya, and so ngayon desperada siya, no? or desperado siya, palagi siyang galit sa mundo. Okay, so these are the, the eight stages of psychosocial development uh, theory according to Eric Erikson. Now, kay Freud naman, Freud of course is very famous for his psychosexual stages, no? Uh, owls always play late games, okay? That's oral, anal, phallic, latency, genital. Or you can also use the mnemonic uh, OA phalage, okay? OA phalage, oral, anal, phallic, latent, or latency, then genital. Now, sabi ni Lolo Freud, si Lolo Freud kasi medyo may pagka mahilig, no? mahilig si, Ro si Lolo Freud. Sabi niya, sa lahat ng stages sa buhay ng tao, merong parte ng ating katawan na nagbibigay sa atin ng satisfaction. And he called these different parts of the body the erogenous zone. No? So, during the oral stage, the first stage here, the erogenous zone is the mouth. So, kung inyong nakikita, if you try to observe your kids no, during this time, birth to one year, whatever they pick, they put inside their mouth. Kaya po, merong mga choking hazard, no? yung may mga choking hazard warning sa ating mga toys, hindi po pwedeng mga masyado maliliit na toys ay ilapit natin sa kanila kasi kahit ano po yung nakikita nila or nadadampot nila, ilalagay nila sa, sa kanilang mouth. Okay? So, because our erogenous zone is the mouth. Now, the next stage is your anal stage from one to three to three years. The erogenous zone here is bowel and, and bladder control. The anus no, is the erogenous zone. So during this time, po pwede mo nang i-toilet train yung anak mo. Turuan mo siya kung paano pumunta sa toilet, paano mag-flush, for example. No? That's uh, during the anal stage. 
Now, phallic, phallic of course, came from the term phallus, which in Filipino means aret, no? yung aret ng bata. This is from three to six years old. The erogenous zone, of course, would be the genital. So here, the child is very curious about his genitals or her genitals. So you can see that the child would, would play with his genitals or would play with her genitals. So wag niyong sasabihin sa anak niyo, pag nakita niyong ginagawa ito, wag niyong sabihin na ay manyakis, no? manamana sa tatay, manamana sa nanay. No? This is just natural. The child is just being curious. And the child is just trying to discover uh, the different parts of the body using his own body. Okay, now latent stage, this is from 6 to puberty. Uh, when you say latency, this means inactive. No, So uh, during this time, the child is very busy with schoolwork. Kaya wala po siyang erogenous zone. No? So sabi ni Piaget, ananat ni Piaget ni Freud, walang erogenous zone during the latency stage dahil very busy with schoolwork yung bata wala siyang erogenous zone. And then the last part would be your genital stage. That's from puberty to death. Your child here has already matured and of course matured na rin yung kanyang sexual interest. Parang katulad siya ng phallic. But sa phallic stage, sariling sikap yung bata. No? Sa genital stage, meron na siyang partner. Meron na siyang sexual partner that's according to freud okay so that's freud psychosexual stages now freud is also known for the three parts of his personality you know tripartite your id your ego and your super ego remember your ego is focused on reality principle no? so this one is the balance between your id and your super ego your super ego uh, or it reduces the conflict between the id and the superego by using defense mechanisms. So defense mechanisms for reality are all part of your ego. This is your idea of yourself. No? So ego puyan. And um, as for your extremes here, you have the id. The id is animalistic. No? This is driven by pleasure. Okay, So this is present at birth and this is placed selfishness and demands gratification. I want it now. Dapat ngayon na. These are your animalistic desires, your libido, your sexual urges, your fetishes. No? Yung, mga, uh, yung mga tinatago niyong sexual urges, sexual desires, hunger, thirst. These are all part of your id. While your super ego, this is the moralistic side of yourself. No, so um, this says you can't have it; it's not right. It, this develops around the age of five, and it's our internal morals that we learn from our same-sex parent that punishes our ego for any any wrong through guilt. No, so this is your guilt. Guilt, no, naman itong iyong super ego, the moralistic side of yourself. Okay, so and uh, the ego, of course, is the balance between. The two. Now, si, si Young naman, Carl Jung or Carl Young, uh, he's also famous for his four major archetypes. No? So, sabi naman niya, halos uh, pareha siya nung kay Freud kanina, yung id, ego, and super ego. Meron tayong iba't ibang sides ng ating personality. Ito yung archetypes ni or archetypes ni Young. No? So, sabi niya, unang-una, you have your persona. Your persona, this is the part of your your personality, the part of yourself that you present to the world. Kaya siya nakamaskara, no? This is not necessarily your true self, but this is the self that you present to the public. Ito yung pinapakita mo sa tao, minsan meron kang kinukuble, minsan eh, plastic ka, minsan meron kang pretension, pero this is the part of you that you show other people. So that's your persona. Kaya siya may mask again dahil meron kang pretensions. Then you have the shadow. These are the repressions sex and life instincts lahat ng mga sexual urges mo lahat ng mga mali tungkol sa personality mo lahat ng mga masamang iniisip mo pero ito ay nire-repress mo ito ay uh, hindi mo pinapakita sa kapwa tao mo no that that's your shadow it's a shadow mo siya now the the anima or the animals that's the female or male part of yourself this is the true self ito naman yung totoong ikaw no sa totoong ikaw itong your true self is called the anima or the animal Animals. And the self here, this is a combination of all three. Okay, so that's the circle. This is the unified unconsciousness and consciousness. Lahat ng alam mo sa sarili mo at lahat ng hindi mo alam sa sarili mo nandyan sa the self. Okay, so these are the four major archetypes according to Jung. The persona, the shadow, the anima or animals, and the self. Again, the persona is what you present to the world. Okay, uh, 
it might not be true, but this is how you present yourself to the world. That's your persona. The shadow are those parts of yourself that you hide from the world, okay? And then you have the anima or animals. This is your true self, okay? So ito din yung consciously alam mo na ikaw. And the self, of course, here, this is the combination of all these three, okay? So that's according to Jung's uh, archetypes. But then again, we were looking for Eric Erikson for this item. We move on to the next item. Now, you see the Guru Pinoy logo here. So this, this means this is our question of the day. Make sure that you include the number when you answer on YouTube. Okay, so question number seven, which is not a characteristic of authentic assessment that are a focused on lifelike, meaningful, relevant types of student learning. Letter B offers opportunities to study the problem intensively letter c is it complete or letter d fruitful in terms of genuine learning what is our choice uh si ma'am maria lucy scarlet the sign ko lang po yung kanyang comment good evening po ma'am thank you po sa lahat lpt na po ako take one lang po na dahil siguro pinoy di po nasayang lahat lagi ko lang po pinapanood paulit-ulit ang mga videos pag walang live po natin no? from team gardener to team piache and super galing yun po mag-explain god bless po maraming salamat and of course congratulations kay ma'am maria lucy scarlet lpt no so from team gardener pa siya team thunder hanggang sa naging team piache Okay, what is your choice? Letter C. I see a lot of letter C's in question number seven or for question number seven. Okay, so going back to number seven here, hindi kayo na budol, ha? hindi kayo na mislook ngayon. Okay, mukhang tumpak ay yung choice. Which is not a characteristic of authentic assessment. Though. So not, hindi siya parte or hindi siya characteristic ng ating authentic assessment. Remember your... Uh, ayon, merong isang nabudol, no? hindi niya nakita yung not. Remember your performance tasks as part of your K-12 are all types of authentic assessment. When you say authentic assessment, as close to the real thing, no? almost katulad ng real thing. Those that you can apply in real life activities, okay? So which is not a characteristic of your authentic assessment? Focus on lifelike, meaningful, relevant types, okay? So that is correct, no? So authentic ito. Offers opportunities to study the problem intensively. Yes, okay? So that's correct. Easy to complete. That is our choice. Now, ito po yung ating tumpak na choice. Letter C, explain ko later. And letter D, fruitful in terms of genuine learning. When you are doing assessment, which is authentic with your students, it is more genuine learning. No? Mas, mas, um, mas maganda yung learning natin. Because of course, mas meaningful, meaningful yung learning. Hindi lamang drills, hindi lamang uh, memorization, but the students can apply what they have learned from the classroom to their real life. Okay, so it's not easy to complete. As you can see, no, pag nagpo-performance task yung mga anak nyo, kung kayo ay may anak, kung kayo ay may pamangkin, alam yung nahihirapan sila. No? So I, when I was uh, in Ateneo before, um, what we would do before we start our semester, what we would do is we would gather as um, as teachers and titingnan namin kung ano yung mga performance tasks na po pwede namin emerge or po pwede namin i-collab. No? Because uh, as teachers, our goal is to not let our students suffer. No? Our goal is not to let them suffer. Our goal is to, to let them learn. So kahit na... Uh, performance task yung kanilang gagawin, meron pa rin different parte ng kanilang performance task kung pwede merong i-collab. For example, si English at si Computer Science, kung meron po pwede i-collab, no? po pwede. No? So, we try to merge the performance task hanggang sa konti na lamang yung maging performance task ng isang student sa isang semester. Okay? So, baka po pwede i-merge yung performance task sa math and English or sa English or math with that of science. Okay, so letter C po ang ating hinahanap dito. It's not easy to complete. Mahirap kompletuhin ang ating authentic assessment. And of course, mahirap din siyang i-check, no? Kaya meron tayong rubrics, okay? We have rubrics in the K-12 na performance task. Number eight, which tool should a teacher use if she wants to locate areas that are adversely affecting the performance of a significant number of students? Letter A, problem checklist. Letter B, self-report technique. Letter C, autobiography. Or letter D, cumulative record. What's your answer for question eight? 
Ano po ang ating tumpak na choice? Question number eight. <laughs> Sabi ni Facebook user, laki, lakihan daw kasi yung nut. Uh, pinag-isipan po kung lalakihan ko or ibubold ko, but of course, I want you to be analytical. No? Kaya alam po na meron talaga mabubutol yung mga hindi nakikita yung nut, yung exempt. No? Alam nyo, uh, maging mapanuri when you take the let, no? the, the people who have come up with the let items, they are trying to outwit you and outsmart you. So dapat huwag kayong papagbudol. No? Tingnan maayos yung ating mga questions, basahin maigi. Okay, otherwise, mali po yung ating magiging choice. Okay, number eight, which tool should a teacher use if she wants to locate areas that are adversely affecting the performance of a significant number of students? If you are a, you are a teacher, isa kang guro, gusto mong tingnan kung ano kaya yung mga dahilan bakit nahihirapan yung aking mga estudyante. Is it because of our classroom? Mahina ba yung... Uh, um, mahina ba yung sounds inside my classroom? Hindi ako narinig ng mga nasa likod, no? Or pag online ba, mahina yung signal, hindi sila nakakaaral na mabuti. Is it because of the materials? Baka um, hindi maganda yung materials yung libro na aking ginagamit, no? So you want to check the different areas that give, uh, that adversely affect, no? Hindi maganda yung apekto sa performance ng yung students. And the correct choice here, of course, should be letter A, problem checklist, no? Titingnan mo kung ano yung problema? Problem checklist po yung ating hinahanap. Hindi yung self-report technique. Self-report technique, of course, this is pertaining to uh, reflection. No? So this is more on reflection. Autobiography, you will be writing about your life story. That's autobiography. Cumulative record naman, this is the total record of a student. No? Isa, isa siyang form sa DepEd that has all the records of a student. Okay? So letter A po yung ating hinahanap for number 8. We go to number nine, schools should develop in the students the ability to adapt to a changing world. This is, a, this is adherence to the philosophy of letter A, essentialism, letter B, perennialism, letter C, existentialism, or letter D, reconstructionism. What is our choice for question number nine? Again, please don't forget to like, love, share our video. Okay, pag meron pa po kayong mga kaklaseng magdi-take ng let, no, ayain niyo po sila mag-watch ng ating video para din po matulungan sila ng Gurong Pinoy. And of course, become a member of our teams, Team Piaché for September and Team Brunner naman for March. Just send a message to our Facebook page. Okay, what is our choice for question number nine? Ma'am Wina Isugon Hamandron. Maraming salamat po for the stars. Okay, basahin ko lamang yung comment ni Ma'am Jean CG. Good evening, Ma'am Meg. Thank you so much. Dahil po sa lahat ng video nyo, nakapasa na ako. Ang galing nyo mag-teach. Kahit hirap ako sa time kasi working student ako. Pero sa tulong nyo, Yo po, pumasa ako ngayon. It's me, Rosalie Sigano, LPT. Congratulations, Ma'am Rosalie. Okay, so again, napaka-convenient ng ating online review. Po, pwede niyo pong balikan ito kahit na hindi kayo makapag-join ng live. No? Hindi po nawawala yung videos natin sa Team Piaché. Kapag ka-face-to-face -face kasi, kapag ka ikaw ay absent, wala na. Hindi mo na mababalikan kung ano yung na mismo. No? But uh, sa online, po pwede balik-balikan. All right, now going back to number nine, this is a question pertaining to your isms, isms of education. Schools should develop in the students the ability to adapt to a changing world, change the world, change the society into something new, something better. Okay, so adapt to your changing world. And the correct choice natin dito is reconstructionism. Remember, sometimes we call this social reconstructionism. 
change the world into a better one, change the society to a better one, okay? Now, uh, essentialism mo dito, when you say essential, what's important lang, no? kung ano lang importante, this would include your three R's, the three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic, back to the basics, no? very traditional, yan yung inyong essentialism. Perennialism mo, unchanging, okay? My forever, sabi ng perennialism mo. Whatever was used a long time ago can still be used until now. That's forever. That's perennialism. Existentialism, this means freedom and responsibility. Freedom, choice, responsibility. The kid, the student has the choice to be what he or she would want to become. Meron siyang freedom to choose, but he or she would, uh, would have to be responsible for the different choices that he or she has taken okay so that's existentialism if you are still not um not uh very familiar with all of these isms so panoorin niyo po yung ating isms of education na reviewer yan po yung parte din ng isa sa ating mga videos sa ating gurong pinoy na youtube channel inisa isa ko po lahat ng isms doon and very thorough po yung ating explanation so parang po kayo ay maliwanagan sa isms of education balikan niyo po yung video Okay, but for number nine, letter D, ang tumpak na choice. We go to number 10. Philippinization is violated if, letter A, an educational institution is owned by a corporation of which 40% of the capital is owned by Filipino citizens. Letter B, an educational institution owned by a religious order. Letter C, an American serving as president of the educational institution letter d an educational institution owned by a charitable institution okay what is our choice for number 10. number 10 what do you think is the tumpakna choice number 10 Ma'am Nancy Nalam, good evening po Coach Mek, ganap na pong LPT ako. Uh, very happy yesterday pag out ng result. Team T po ako, no? Team Thunders. Thank you so much sa inyo at sa Gurong Pinoy po, Coach Mek. Congratulations Ma'am Nancy Nalam, LPT. Congratulations po sa lahat ng ating mga LPTs. Okay, what's your choice for question number 10? Number 10, we are looking for a violation of Filipinization. And ang tumpak, choice, uh, tumpak na choice natin dito, of course, is letter C. No, we cannot have an American serving as president of the educational institution. So letter C po, ang tumpak na choice for number 10. We go to number 11. Centralization is to Education Act of 1901 as to decentralization is to blank. Letter A, RA9155. Letter B, RA9293. Letter C, RA7836. Or letter D, RA7722. What is our choice for number 11? Okay, number 11. Ano po yung ating choice? Question number 11, what do you think is the right choice? 